the National Football League on EA Sports. And we'll keep our eye on Drew Sanders, who had a strong showing last week with an eight-tackle game. It's the Broncos and the Raiders, and it's coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Las Vegas, Nevada. Today we've got a Week 8 matchup on tap here as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. Again, everyone, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at the Raiders here entering play. They come in after tasting defeat for the first time in about a month as their loss snapped a four-game winning streak. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. And we are underway at Allegiant Stadium. And no run back here on the opening kickoff as we'll start at the 25. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the man who proclaims to be from a whole pack of Badgers, came into the league back in 2012, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills, the ability to throw from the pocket, and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. A run there on first down gets three up to the 28. You look at this Raiders defense. They find themselves just a couple of spots outside of the top 10 defending the pass, number 12 in the league. So prepping for this game, I kept asking myself the question, what's keeping this group from being top 10 in the league against the pass? And? too many mistakes, especially little mistakes. And those add up into big mistakes. Big mistakes add up into points against you. On second down, here's Wilson. That's complete. It's Greg Dulcich. And he's going to be down at the 35. Gain of seven. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to move the sticks with a gain of four on third and inches. Faced with their first third down conversion opportunity and able to punch it through and pick it up on the ground. And to me, doing it on the ground sends a different type of a message than throwing the football. And, you know, let's face it, we've done a lot of games together. How often have we seen third down turn into an automatic passing down no matter what the yard is? Yeah, and last thing you want, that opening drive to go three and out. You got everything scripted, lined up. Let's get some points on the board. And they're able to avoid that three and out. On second down, Williams. And he's going to have a Broncos first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. They did tell us they wanted to establish the ground game early, didn't they? They did, and a small sample size that we've seen so far, but pretty good return. Yeah, you got to like that. They've strung together a couple of first downs. Established with under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now, how about that? Defensive coordinator perfectly in sync, dials up a blitz. And the man in the middle, he's the one who gets home. Big Mike. Big Up the middle, it's Williams. And this will be taken across midfield and into Raider territory. Only two yards on the pickup there, and now they're looking at a long third down. They need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Pressure comes, and Wilson's going to go down. 
multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. Now make that a second sack here on their first drive out defensively, and not to get ahead of ourselves, but they're they're on pace for double-digit sacks at this point. But they're going to have to find a way to tamp that down, aren't they? So if you're the play caller, you're telling your quarterback maybe some screens, maybe some draws, hard count, use your voice inflection a little bit, anything to try and slow that pressure down. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Raiders will take over now, first and 10. So here comes the Raiders offense now onto the field. They're led by their quarterback from the University of Alabama, Mac Jones. And you've got to think that they've got to be feeling pretty fresh. You know, coming off of the open week, didn't have to play, right? Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit, heal some of those aches and pains, and excited about playing again. That really rekindles things a little bit. I want to see how they come out and establish themselves here early. And that bye week coming right where they want it in the middle of the schedule. This defense for the Broncos, they were terrific last week in the win over Denver. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Now Jones. And that will be incomplete. I'm quite sure that they envisioned a much better start to this game when they practiced all week. But they failed on that third down play. That brings up fourth down, and they'll probably have to punt it away. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. This is taken at the 18. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. The offense getting set again. We spotlight Javante Williams, the running back. Those are his numbers through roughly the first half of the season. And given that, you'd have to think he's on pace for a 1,000-yard campaign. Steady as he goes. Steady goes the off. And the Raiders have got him. Patrick Queen got in there to stick him. He gets the sack. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Man, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game. I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what. When he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Tall task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. Third and long, it's Wilson. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. It'll be a pickup of 14, but they're still a little bit short as it brings up fourth. The fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. This is brought in at the 21. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And it'll be Raiders football first and 10. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. Coming off every player's friend, the open week from last weekend. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Even if you're coming off of a loss as they did, the open week is exactly what you need after you kind of get over a little bit, right? Rest up the mind, rest up the body. Get yourself ready to go. And they have to be eager to play again, especially since they lost the last time out. On second down, it's Taylor. Yeah, he'll fight for a couple as the tackle is made at about the 32. But you look at this Bronco defense. They interplay one from the bottom, number 31 in the league, Charles, against the run. And that's been an Achilles heel for them all season long, being able to play against the run, being able to slow teams down. But it's not just that. When you give up big chunks of yardage in the running game, it also opens up the passing options for the team you're playing as well. So typically, when you don't play the run well, you're getting hit in all phases. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Throwing Jones. He'll fire this one deep for Hearns. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. 
picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Broncos are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. But when I looked down, he was kind of shaking his head right after he threw that pass. Uh, what did you see? Well, from a defense's perspective, anytime you have your eyes back towards the quarterback, you're in a position to make a play on the ball, whether it's a big-time play by you or overthrow by the quarterback. You have a much better opportunity. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. On second down, Wilson. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. They overload him that time with a safety blitz, and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. And it's third and long now for Wilson and the Broncos after that sack. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. I know this offense was expected. first quarter as he gets it away and he'll take it just outside the 40 it's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards and they will take over first and 10 the Raiders heading out to take over we've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10 now meanwhile a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Looking to throw. Jones. They'll run the screen with Hubbard. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter from Vegas. The home standing Raiders with a football here as they've got it with a first and ten. Back to throw. Jones over the middle complete. It's Myers. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to bring up second down. The Raiders sitting at a very solid four and two record through the first six weeks. And they come in with fresh legs. They got the extra time off thanks to an early season open week. And usually your hope is that you're Open week comes a little bit later in the year, but when you get a chance to get your fresh legs back, you have to take that time and run with it, and that's what they're trying to get done here. Down inside the 10. A big play there on the catch and run. 31 yards. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Now a diving catch made just beyond the line of scrimmage. And that is caught. Touchdown, Raiders. Michael Mayer laying himself out in the end zone. And the Raiders post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. And that makes it 7-zip Vegas. That time, a six-play drive. And it was finished off by a Michael Mayer touchdown grab. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. So the Broncos coming out now. 
They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. A quick throw caught out wide by Judy. And he's upended after a gain of two out right to the 27. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I'll tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, he's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. On third down, Wilson forced out to his left. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. This quick pass complete to Sutton. Able to avoid him at the 40. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. From the 43, here's second and a couple. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And he stopped immediately there. Calling no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. And a throw there, going to be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Now here's Trenton Gill now. This is taken at the 18. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just got good ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. The Raiders on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he's able to get out to the 32. One down there. They're able to convert with a gain of four. So far this season, this is an offense that's proved its ability to move the football. I mean, they're in the top five in the NFL and picking up first downs, and they get the conversion here. And I think a lot of that is due to how they win on first and second down because that leaves them third and short, third and manageable. A lot easier to pick them up then, isn't it? Give them a first down, 15 yards that time for the Raiders. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Room to maneuver at the 35. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. Of course the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. First and 10, Taylor now. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Back-to-back -back four yard runs. Now look, hey, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. On third down, here's Taylor. Oh, he bowls over it. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. That'll go as a pickup of eight. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. 
So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. This is caught. Touchdown. Trey Tucker, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Raiders have taken a two-touchdown lead now. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated it on the sidelines, right? Perfect route, a good throw in the defense. They have no answer for that right there. Carlson on for the PAT. And it's good to make it 14-0. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it ends with a Las Vegas touchdown. On is the Raider kickoff unit now as they will send this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Wilson's throw caught here by Dulcich. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. But I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. On first down, Wilson. And incomplete. Well, we've seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting in the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. Second and ten now, Wilson. And his throw is incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because any completions on first and second down, now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. And they'll get this across the midfield stripe, but still winding up short of the first down. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. And here's Trenton Gill on to punt. He'll return it from the six. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out and now consider the lead. The question is, how much is good enough? Are you going for more? It's the NFL. There's never enough, I believe, because they get reeled in all the time when you sit on the ball. I think that they will try and move the ball downfield and try and squeeze a few more points out of this first half. They'll be careful. They'll be a little bit cautious at times, but also they will attack downfield and try and get in position for at least three points. Well, he's got to have that wrong, doesn't he? They, they decline that. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Sorry to step on you there, partner, but let's go ahead and run this one together, right? Incomplete pass. Yeah, they call pass interference, and somehow you're going to decline that. I'm so confused. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. With all the success they've had throwing the football as a pass rusher, you know you've got to come hard when you see them drop back to throw. So I really like this call to counteract that pass rush with a screen. It turns into positive yardage. A lot of times the offense says, just replace the rusher with the ball, and it turns into a good play. And he's going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. 
That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. Not wanting to take a chance this time, they'll keep it on the ground. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. So we have reached halftime here in Vegas with the Raiders on top. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Hi again, everybody. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the league here in the unofficial midway point, week eight of the NFL season. We'll get started out at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, where it was the visiting Chargers who were able to come in and steal one on the road. Austin Eckler, a touchdown run in the victory. Next, we head off to check out another game, and they've got the lead in their ball game over the visiting New Orleans Saints. Elijah Moore, two touchdown catches on the afternoon. Finally, we'll save the biggest for last as we head to AT&T Stadium to see what's happening with the Cowboys at home in Arlington. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. Dak Prescott lighting it up. He's got three touchdown passes. Both teams making their final adjustments before we get started once again. And for the call of the second half, let's send you back out to Allegiant Stadium and Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. A two-touchdown game, 14-0 to score as we get rolling again here in this second half. On the return, Trey Tucker. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Raider offense ready to go here to start the third quarter. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And he's got some space here. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Fresh out of the locker room. They hit him with a gain of over 20. Perfect execution on that inside handoff. And then a little will, a little brute strength to move forward after the contact. What do we call that now in today's NFL? Heck, in today's football? Contact balance, right? That's the buzzword, the phrase you hear. A back who can absorb contact, bounce off of it, and keep moving. Just what you said, brute strength, force of will. Back to Taylor on first down. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they're coming a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. 79 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Joe, a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 44-yard line. Looking to throw, Jones. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides, and there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Throwing again on second and 10. Jones, a short throw, and that's hauled in by Mayer. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else, and now it's third and 10. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now, right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. Open man is Myers. And he'll get this only to about the 38 as they stop him a few yards shy of the line to gain. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. 
And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. Wilson and the Broncos now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Here's Williams to start the drive. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I think it's pretty evident. We can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. And there's another stop. One of the league's best defenses is certainly bringing it again this week. To throw is Wilson. Into the hands of Patrick, left side. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Fielded at the 20. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return. And now here come the Raiders. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or do they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Second down, another run with Taylor. Now the ball comes loose. Oh, this one that may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Wow, that ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And he is not quite going to make it all the way in. They'll mark him down right about the one-yard line. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores, but yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This... And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Javante Williams, his third rushing touchdown of the year. And the Broncos take the forced turnover on defense and convert it into six points. Done good with the extra point, and that'll cut the lead to 17-7. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals, just something magical about breaking. Hey guys, I'm really sorry about that. From about uh, two minutes left to go in the first half to now, I just got I got a phone call, so I've made some goddamn boneheaded plays. But uh, Justin Simmons made a really good play on that uh, that interception. But uh, other than that, like when I declined the the penalty on accident and shit, From the gun, <laughs> oh, this wasn't focusing. But uh, it's all right, man. This game's going well for me, and uh, 
Normally with two picks, I probably, you know, try to try to start it again. I got to take Taylor off with Hubbard in, actually. But, um, anyway, so sorry about that. I don't know if I made some fucking boneheaded decisions, but that's why I'm not really Taylor. <laughs> Taylor's running good, yeah. I'm going to take him out for the rest of the... I'm probably gonna take him out for two more. Uh, for two more, if I, especially if I score here, I'm gonna take him out probably for two more. Um, I might even leave him in and then just take him out the rest of the game. Just leave him in the rest of the quarter and just kind of put Hubbard in, especially if he's, he's got over 100 yards now. I think, yeah, he's, he's he's having a good game. I just won't want to be running him like 30, 30 times in a game. But that's the main thing I've screwed up on is really taking him in and out, declining that penalty on accident, and then taking him in and out. That's really what I've screwed up on. Back to throw, Jones. Oof, oof. I, oh man. You know it's funny. I throw, if, you, if you watch how I throw, I throw it with anticipation. So I throw with where I think the guy's going to be and where I think the defender's going to be. So when the defender's running to his left and I throw it, and he stops in the middle of it and goes to his right. It's not. I'm not expecting him to do that. Um, so anyway, that's just kind of how I, how I throw the ball. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. They get seven out of that, so they're left. Yeah, running the ball really well right now. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Let me tell you that this, this, this see where the Tucker on the nice left, that on that table, um on the right, sorry, that uh, that now route's really defense, good in this game. What are they gonna do on third down? You're a little off balance. Oh fuck! What? Oh, oh. Jones has just thrown his third interception. Picked off by Drew Sanders, and the Broncos are gonna get the football here. Man, I really, I fucking swear to God, dude, I really do. Like three people were covering that one guy. Did not expect him to be there. I did not. I, I expected him. See what they do? They start moving and then they stop. See, he goes. Oh my God! I'll show you. They start. Oh the fuck. Is he picking up man to man? Is he having to run? I'm gonna have to start this game over. I'm not throwing three interceptions in a game for shit like that. Sorry. Watch the fucking defender. It's like they fucking just like, it's all they do is watch the ball, then they react to the actual ball. Instead of actually playing the fucking game normally, which is fine. He's gone here like he's going to blitz, right? Move the fuck over. He, okay, so so if you watch on the right where Tucker's going, when he goes out and stops, that's where I throw the ball. So when Sanders is going back, I'm thinking he's going to keep running back with the fucking tight end. So why are one, two... Four, five people, four people, one, two, three, four people are covering two people. Look at this. Everything is covered. Everything is, they have all these people covering all these. Look at this. Everything is fucking way uh, over covered. And I still have someone coming in to fucking hit me. I still have someone coming in. Fucking ridiculous. Head on a swivel and excellent hands. Yeah, versatility and showing those hands. They'll try to get this running game going with Williams. I thought he was gonna start I thought he was gonna kind of float back and help with the fucking tight end, and he never did. There was a corner, there was three people on that route. Three people on that route. Yeah, even on that one, there was a three of them. There was the corner on the right, the safety kind of was staying there too, and then the fucking uh the fucking linebacker was there. So that, that that's oh, why I threw the ball. The I, I was anticipating the fucking be the linebacker to not stand there and, and then, you know, and wait for me to just throw the ball. Now the offense knew it. They were already it's frustrating, frustrating. Back. Very, very frustrating. So the delay of game penalty backs him up. It's now second and seven. Now a tenth carry. Here's Williams. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And why is Drew Sanders like a fucking superstar in this game? Like, why is he so... He's, he, this is literally one of the hardest linebackers I've ever played against. He's the guy from Arkansas, right? I mean, he's a good player, but Jesus Christ, why is he a fucking star in this game? Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up. I can't. I, it's hard, I've been very difficult. It was very, especially in the first half. It's very difficult to run the ball, especially at the middle. He would just go off a blocker, or he would just, just be right there, and uh, and in coverage, he's just he's fast as fuck. He's like it's like playing against fucking Ray Lewis. And this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. 
On first and ten, it's Wilson. Looking left sideline, incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. They go play action now. Wilson. Short throw caught by Dosich. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Las Vegas. Welcome back, everybody. It's the Broncos trailing, but they do have possession of the football as we begin quarter number four. Mims in motion right. And they'll fake the jet sweep, and now off play action, it's Wilson. Touchdown, Broncos! Cortland's... Yeah, man, my lack of focus, that shit really fucked me up. I, the, I shouldn't have taken the phone call, to be honest. I mean, it was just it was from someone who I haven't talked to in a little bit, so to just... 26 yards! Between and that and the three interceptions, I fucking deserve to lose this, lose this game. Here in the fourth. Done good with the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So I will say this, my interceptions were really for just bad decisions. It was just like I should have kind of Take watched the linebacker a little bit better. I, I should have anticipated him doing what I thought he was going to do and just and throwing it like that. It's probably a bad way to five. kind of throw the ball. But uh, and the other two were just good plays. They were just, the guy went back, sat back, and just made a jump jump along on the ball. Uh, Simmons, but uh, other than that, I think I played pretty well. Yeah, and if I'm a defender... I'm actually chirping to the on the other side of the ball. Said, "Hey!" Oh yeah, so we're, we're gonna run the fuck out of this. We're gonna run. We're gonna run this clock. We're gonna grind this fucking. We're gonna grind this fucking clock to a pulp. If there's any hesitancy at all, they've got they, they, they they've got two players on defense that are just playmakers, and uh, Russell Wilson's there, and I'm not getting in like I was as far as blitzing and pass rushing and stuff. So, so Mac Jones, have I, how many? I think I'm three and three on touchdowns, right? Two and three. Yeah, see? And I'm only 160 yards passing. Like, I thought I'd be like almost 300 yards passing. So right left with a third down and six. All right. Third and six, and I'm throwing this class. I, I, I can totally deserve to lose this game. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just not thinking right now. They'll set up the screen here for Hubbard. There we go. Yeah, I'm in the middle of texting people and shit, too. I mean, I don't have an excuse. I'm just, that's why I'm playing like a fucking idiot. All right, oh, God, here we go. The cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide. And these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. I'm going to grind this clog down. If I can score again, that's really going to mess them up. I feel like I can rely on my defense. I feel like my defense has played well enough um, all season. To be able to just go, okay, I need you to stop somebody for a quarter, and for for a drive. Let's see, Hearns. If if the safety, if Simmons doesn't doesn't uh, follow him, I'm throwing it to him. To Hearns. Where's Hearns going? He's supposed. To, what? You're taking charge. Hold on. You guys saw. Whoa, 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 whoa. See, okay, so my mind's not playing tricks. Hold on. He's supposed to go straight up. He's supposed to go straight up. Like for a fly. He's supposed to go on a fly. Look what he does. What is that bullshit? Looking to throw. Jones. I'd hit that button three times. He literally sat there. I'd hit the, that throw to that, that X button three times. Let me tell you, this Meyer, Mayer guy I shouldn't be throwing it more. <laughs> guy catches everything. He's always open. That ends are good in this game. Give up the middle, Hubbard. He finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was the right. offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. 
Why is Trey Tucker the line of scrimmage? The 24. This is second and six. Hold on. Why is Myers in the slot all game? Hold on. I Madden, if you're fucking with my depth chart again, I fucking swear to God. Yeah, oh my god, dude. Trey Tucker's supposed to be the fucking slot. Why? Why is he oh my god, Madden, stop. I haven't seen him in the slot. I'm like, why is he in the slot? I've never really kind of questioned it out loud, but I was like, why is he in the fucking slot every Meyer in the slot every goddamn play? I don't know why Madden does that. Madden, if you get an injury, they 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 change your entire starting lineup. I don't know why they do that. They're like resets your depth chart. It's fucking annoying. On the give, this is Hubbard. It's like whenever someone, you know, hurts their fucking right pinky toe, you got to go reset all of your fucking depth chart. All of it. I don't know about you guys, but like I set my, um... That poor defensive line, they've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. That's complete into the hands of Myers. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Simple drag route here, lined up out left. And I don't even remember what I was saying with the stupid fucking the goddamn field. dog. You saw me twitch there, partner, because I've had so many. I've had so many distractions this morning. It's, it's annoying. It in, defender was right on him. Throwing Jones. There we go. There we go. He, finds he can't create separation. This guy's like I don't know. He's like a little slow or something. Like I like him. He's good, but he just I I I, I, I never get any like. Unless I kind of get lucky, I don't really get like um after the, the catch yards for finding his way open and completing the connection. What what really? He just happened to go right back where he where he. Yes, sir. What are these fucking plays there, Carl? What is this bullshit? What are these fucking plays they're calling? Go again from the three here on second and goal. Let's see what happens. They look to throw again. Flushed out right. All right Mac Jones right in his fucking play. Take it Terrible play calling. Mac Jones with his third touchdown and 18th on the year, and the Raiders will add to their fourth quarter lead. Extra point by Carlson, up and good, and his guys. Will yeah, take just it. annoying, man. Just, just this game has been. I'm winning, but it's it's been a very frustrating game. Very frustrating game. With the distractions. Very, very annoying. Playing like fucking complete dog shit now. On is the Raider kickoff unit now as they will send this one away. Like I, say, like I said, at least I'm winning. At least I'm playing a fucking team that's not very good. The football going back over to the Denver Broncos. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Don't, so don't ever call cover cover two in this game ever. It's terrible. You'll, you'll never, you'll Denver never stop adjusting this game of cover two. It works in reality, but it doesn't work in this game. Caught left side, it works in some, so some spots, but not this. Because you know why? The, 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 the players in this game down. have zero instinct. They don't know what to do. They don't. The, the defensive linemen don't don't fill gaps. The the corners sometimes play the ball, sometimes don't. Sometimes they'll stand there. Like it's just weird. You know, I, I feel like EA needs to really take a step back and like come out with this game like every two years. Give this game another year of development every year to really actually make it better. They always just they make the same fucking game and they make like one little tweak to the game. And that's still impressive to come out with it every year, but. Um, but the AI really needs to be improved in this game. They, they, it really does. It really does. I don't think like receivers fight for the ball enough. I don't think um, linebackers and shit adjust. And only a few. Only a few. Like linebackers don't really adjust. The corners don't really play the ball like they should or consistently anyway. Okay, now I can. Now that he's all of a sudden fucking Drew Brees. Okay. He's got 100 yards passing all game. He's got 100, you know. He, I think what, he had about 77 yards passing going to this drive or something. Now all of a sudden I can't stop him. Great. This is another thing Madden does. The AI just controls. Like, it doesn't matter what you do. The, the AI just will just control the game. If, you, if, you, if they don't want you stopping them, you will never stop them. Now it's Wilson. Now, now all of a sudden he's fucking Peyton Manning. 
He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. Second and ten. It's Wilson again. And Why is the corner standing there? Can the corner play the ball, please? Can the corner play the ball? See, see what I'm talking about? The corners don't play the ball. They don't play the ball at all. Like, very, very rare. The only time they play the ball is when you switch to them and you actually hit triangle, and sometimes it works and just sometimes it doesn't. It just doesn't stand there. Like that one pass where I literally hit the button. I had to hit the button three times. I hit it once, it didn't work. Hit it twice, it didn't work. And it hit a third time, and it worked. On a drag, it was almost out of bounds by the time he threw the ball. Oh, there we go. See, they didn't play the ball. They just hit the player when they had the ball in their hands. That's frustrating. Very, very frustrating. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down. Stay in bounds. Keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. They run once more with Taylor. A little jerk. And he's going to have a Raider first down. And that should be the one that finishes the script here. Let me tell you, if I didn't run the ball so well in this game, I would have had a really bad game. A this would have been a probably a close loss. And here, here's another thing that they do, and I shouldn't have done it, but like they'll call a they'll call a fucking a kneel, and then they'll call a, a run. Like the, the clock rundown is weird in this. Second down, it's Taylor. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. 154 yards rushing for him now to this point. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. How about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. They'll run again. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's a gain of four, and that should just about seal the deal. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. So it's a win here for the Raiders, and due in large part to the play of their quarterback, and that's Mac Jones. Yeah, he did a little bit of everything, didn't he? He had two touchdown passes through the air, another one on the ground, and that defense, they really had no answer for many of their drives. So for the Raiders, the win moves them up to 5-2 and two now on the year. And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for Denver, the struggles intensify as they drop to 2-6 and six now on the year. And they'll be on the road next week as they travel to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com.
celebration time tonight on the Strip as we say so long from Las Vegas.